the way I'm not going to say she's as bad as the DeBargie's mom, but she is ranking pretty close up there. Bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about LaToya Jackson. Bye. Latoya Jackson. In most families, that kind of individual attention would breed jealousy and rivalries, but not in the Jacksons. Tito, Jermaine, and especially Jackie all understood why Michael received a disproportionate share of attention. A wonderful singer himself, Jackie used to tell people matter-of-factly that even when Michael was five, it was obvious he should be the group's leader. Tito, the most dedicated musicians of all the guys and the only one to study music formally, was secure in his role. So was Jermaine, who got to sing solos and duets with Michael. Marlon, however, seemed to get lost in the shuffle. Off stage, he loved to play practical jokes and show off. Like any normal kid, he just wanted attention. One problem was that he got compared a lot to Michael, probably because they were so close in age and even looked like them. I guess it was inevitable that he feel competitive with his younger brother, but mother used to reprimand him about it all the time. Jackie, the most sensitive of us, would ask her, why are you always correcting Marlon? Because he can't be so competitive, Jackie. It's a bad trait, and he's got to break himself of it before he gets older. Perhaps, but it did seem that she picked on Marlon the most, especially about his dancing on stage. I never understood that because he was frequently singled out in reviews for his smoothness and preciseness. Mother further quelled any potential jealousy towards Michael by treating him like a regular kid. Michael, his full name was reserved for the many times he exasperated us. Like when he was teasing Janet about her chubbiness. Paul, this is when I say I'm not sure about this book being full of lies because in that whack ass documentary that Janet Jackson gave us that basically she I mean she told us what we already knew actually she just admitted to a lot of things that we already knew she did say that Michael used to tease her about her weight Michael his full name was reserved for the many times he exasperated us like when he was teasing Janet about her chubbiness or me about my obsessive neatness and round face Moonface, he used to call me. It wasn't long before Motown realized what a gold mine it had in the Jackson 5. Besides the millions of records sold and the companies take from the concerts, there was merchandising or licensing the guys' likenesses for items such as lunchboxes and also for a Saturday morning cartoon TV series that premiered in fall 1971. Like the Beatles cartoons, the Jackson five featured the group's music but my brother's speaking voices were dubbed by actors of all the things success brought this was probably michael's and marlon's favorite perk watching their animated selves convert on screen you all are nothing that's what my father used to tell the wealthiest most famous talented black teenagers in america contempt dripping from every syllable you are all weird we heard it almost daily our entire lives tito confided to me that when they were on the road joseph didn't even want to be seen with them until it was time for him to show them young fresh girls that he was the happy tito confided to me that when they were on the road joseph didn't even want to be seen with them it's awful latoya he said he treats us like we're invisible if we ask him why he just looks at us did our father really think so little of his five sons? I believe that systemically destroying their self-worth was Joseph's twisted way of maintaining control over the Jacksons. 
his sole source of financial support. Baby, ninjas do it every day to the women. If a man knows that he is unworthy of a woman, what he'll do is to put her down constantly. So she will constantly uh, question herself and her abilities and then be so shaken that anything he tells her, she'll run to do because he didn't gaslit her into believing that she's not good enough. It saddens me to think of all we have missed. Just recently, Tito said to me of his school days, Latoya, whenever I was around kids at school, they always talked about how their fathers took them there and here and there, and I had nothing to say. I never had that opportunity. Joseph did nothing with us. Jackie, who turned 20 in 1971, still lived at home and continued to receive the brunt of our father's hatred and cruelty. To this day, Joseph blames him for anything that goes wrong in any situation. Jackie boy did it. He'll say scornfully, my father thought nothing of slapping Jackie and the others in public, shocking and repulsing onlookers. Joseph's battering was a well-known secret around Motown, yet none of them ever fought back. One time after Joseph threatened to smack Jackie, my older brother reflexively reared back as if to throw a punch. What? My father roared, standing closer to Jackie. Did you raise your hand to me? With that, he crushed his heavy fist into Jackie's face, nearly knocking him unconscious. Joseph, mother cried. What are you doing? So like I tell you guys, I don't always r respond to the comments, but I do always read the comments. OK, and a lot of you have a concern with the fact that Catherine didn't do more to protect her children. OK, number one, that J.W. Faith, man, that thing is something vicious. Y'all know that on my mother's side, I have a lot of uh, J.W.'s in my family on my mother's side. Right. And man, uh, JWs, they in it. I, I do a Bible study like every week or every other week. And I study with the JWs, okay? I mean, all religions have their little nuances that you'd be like, what? Uh, but the JWs, I would say, are a little more intense. I believe that because Joseph was her first and only love, um, she was married to him. She practiced the JW faith and the fact that she uh, had low self-esteem from the polio that pretty much she stood down with Joseph. In a way, I'm not going to say she's as bad as the, the Bargy's mom, but she, you know, is ranking pretty close up there. In my father's eyes, we were just a bunch of over pampered kids. To friends and associates, he referred to us as weirdos and he seemed to resent our new lifestyle when i was your age bingo the jealousy okay i'll move forward he often lectured us i didn't live in a big house with a pool jealousy i had to work hard as if the brothers didn't work hard rehearsing recording and following a punishing schedule whatever luxuries we were fortunate enough to have they earned. You have a driver taking you to school every morning. Joseph continued. Me, I had to walk 10 miles to school. And these gadgets you have, why these weren't even invented when I was young. What the fuck gadgets did they have? What, what gadgets did they have? The etch sketch? That's not a goddamn gadget, baby. What, what, what is that? Gadgets he's talking about, y'all, please tell me in 1971 what gadgets we had, because I don't remember none. Even in his absence, though, Joseph's presence dominated the house and us. Unless you've dealt with a parent like him, it's probably hard to imagine living perpetually on edge, never knowing what to expect. When was he coming home? What mood would he be in? Anytime the security guard announced over the intercom, Mr. Jackson has arrived. Thank you. Good looking out, security. Good, good looking out. We dropped whatever we were doing and hid, usually in one of our bedrooms, anything to stay out of his way. Maybe every other day we'd catch him storming through the house, ranting at us, usually heading out the door. The only acceptable way to leave home was to marry, like Reby had. 
Okay. Now, before I go forward, let me say this. I saw an interview with Latoya where she alleged that her father had touched Reby inappropriately. And when the host of the show had said, did you write that in a book? She said, no, no, no. I did allude to it. There was nothing in this book so far that I have read that alluded to him uh, being violent with Reby or um, touching Reby inappropriately. Okay. I will stand on the fact when I say, yeah, he might have smacked his girls. He might have yoked them up because I told you there's nothing like a backhand smack to get a child in order. Let me say this. What Reby is doing is nothing different than what a lot of women did back in the day. Back in the day, a lot of women, women got married at like uh, 16 years old, 17, 18 years old, so that they could get them a husband that's already established and move away from home because they wanted their freedom. So that's not too unusual to do. Now, the fact that LaToya is saying that Reby is doing it to escape the family, I get it. Even in the book, LaToya said that Reby was placed in a position to be the second mother. I don't want to be nobody's mammy. I ain't even had no kids yet. What the fuck? I'm taking care of all these kids, and you the one to keep having the kids. Y'all, let me tell you something. Look, I think my mom was like, I can't remember how old she was, but she was still bleeding. Okay, and pretty much because my mother was young, she was still partying and she was working like a motherfucker. Okay, I told you I barely knew the bitch. Okay, because she was always gone. So it was basically me taking care of my younger siblings. Right. But honey, my mother got this new boyfriend. Oh, my God. I said, "Ooh, you love this. One, one day old. I had to tell her to her face. I was 19 years old. I said, don't you get pregnant because I ain't taking care of this one. She looked at me. Next one I know, I see her ass in the bed laid down. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? She's like, I got my tubes tied. Good, bitch. Because I ain't taking care of another one of your kids. In 1971, 17-year-old Tito shocked the family by announcing his plans to wed his first and only girlfriend, Dee Dee. As soon as he graduated high school, Jermaine, Marlon, and Janet, too, would marry their first loves while in their teens. I've noticed a tendency towards early marriages in our large, strict family, like the Osmonds. Remember I was telling y'all about the Osmonds? I don't know all of them. I only know Donnie and Marie. Okay, Marie around there, she doing them slim fast commercials. She looks great, girl. Motown wasn't pleased to learn of Tito's impending nuptials. Ever since I Want You Back earned the label the first of many millions from the Jackson 5, label executives warned Joseph against letting his sons take wives. They believed it could diminish the guy's teen popularity, and disseminate the bottom line. If any of the boys get married, they predicted the fans will drop them like hot potatoes. And after one gets married, they all want to get married. Then the wives start butting in. And before you know it, the group's finished. We've seen this happen before. When one of my brothers, I'd rather not say who, was on the brink of marrying, we had our first encounter with the evil that exists in the record business and probably any high stakes industry. You've no doubt heard about payola, drugs, and other scandals, but believe me, that's barely half of it. Baby, baby.